All right, Marshall, what would an Oklahoma State Big 12 championship game win over Texas mean to the program? I think it would mean an immense amount, not only for the program, but for the conference. You know, this is this is, you know, Mike Gundy didn't want to get into this post game against BYU or uh, Monday at his press conference. But, you know, the Big 12 is better if, if Oklahoma State wins this game, if yeah. the Big 12 championship trophy stays in Big 12 country. Um, as for the program, I think it would mean a ton. You know, everybody's kind of talked about since, you know, the OU Texit kind of who's going to be the next bell cows of the league. Um, it, you know, it looked like Oklahoma State was in a pretty good spot to do that as early as 2021, you know, alongside Baylor. Mm. And then last year did not go great. The, the, the end of last season happened the way that it did. But if they could, you know, roll this momentum into not only beating Oklahoma this year, but beating Texas, sending them both to the SEC and saying, like, you know, Oklahoma State is the champion of the Big 12. Yeah. I, I think that could go a long way for for the program um, in terms of NIL. That's, you know, obviously huge nowadays. Um, and, and it would mean a great deal, I imagine, to Brett Yormark and, and the Big 12 offices. For a guy like Mike Gundy to get a Big 12 championship yeah. game win under his belt, what does that mean? Because there was a point in time after that South Alabama game where you're hearing murmurs from fans of, oh, my gosh, this guy's been here so long, and it's just that hump that for a decade now that Oklahoma State hasn't been able to get over. This this feels different. I mean, here he is again proving so many people wrong. Yeah, and you, you know the, the two things that have kind of gotten held over Mike Gundy's head in terms of the national perspective and, and, and things along that nature is, you know, Bedlam winning percentage, which is still not great, but he, he beat OU in 21. He beat OU this past season. It's going to be the last game for who knows how long. Um, and, and scoreboard. Then, yeah, and, and then the fact that he's got one conference trophy that came in 2011. Um, you, you know, a, a part of that is a part of both of those things is that OU has been, even for OU standards, historically great over the last, you know, 15 ish years. Um, yeah. so, so then a hard to win bedlam games against OU and then B hard to win conference championships when they won, you know, six in a row or whatever it was. Yeah. So, so this would mean a great deal to his resume. I already think he is a college football hall of famer. Um, that was kind of scoffed at as early as like seven years ago. Um, for my Gundy, but you know, just the consistency that he's won and where he has won at, you know, Oklahoma state's not always been, uh, you know, what it is right now. Um, so if he, if he does that, then, you know, it's, it's even more cemented that, that, that's kind of going to be his, his resume. So yeah, this, this, he's not ever going to say it, but this would mean a great deal. I imagine to Mike Gundy. And when you mentioned the Big 12, this is Oklahoma State carrying the Big 12 on its back. The rest of the teams, now that Texas and OU have left, are rooting for the Cowboys this week. Is there that sense of urgency to win for the conference? For me, I know you said that Gundy won't say it outright, but do you feel it from the fan base? Absolutely. You know, and I, I there's some funny the tweets gone out there today that, you know, OSU should almost just wear the Big 12 logo on its helmet, which <laughs> I think would be sweet. Yeah. Um, it awesome. obviously, if, if they got hammered, it would not look very good. Um, mm-hmm. and, and in the same way, you know, Mike Gundy, if he were to, you know, say, yeah, this is Big 12 versus SEC, and then they get drilled on Saturday, then that's not great. But, you know, you know, maybe after the game, if they are able to, to, to find a way to win this game, I imagine he'll, you know, take some time to, to kind of talk about, you know, how big this is for the conference moving forward. And, and you got, you know, Utah coming in, who's um, their fans seem about as confident as UCF fans, which we saw how that went for UCF, but yes. I think Utah's in probably a bit better of a spot. Uh, so I, I, you know, I think there's going to be some teams out there. The Big 12 is going to be a fun league moving forward, um, just in terms of parity. Um, you, you know, that might not be great for the national perception of the league that it doesn't have a Michigan or Ohio state or an Alabama or Georgia or things like that. But um, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun moving forward. And if, they can send the SEC out on a pair of losses, controversial or otherwise. And if you thought the noise was loud for the, the pass interference that should have been called in Bedlam, holy crap, every flag that is thrown against Texas on Saturday is going to be put under a microscope. But, it, you know, if, if they can send those two schools out on a loss, it, it'll be huge. Oklahoma State already has that eternal scoreboard that I mentioned over, over OU and – they had given OU this feeling of hope with the 18-point yeah. BYU comeback. Oklahoma's on the cusp of a Red River rematch. And in a in beautiful, just F you to your rival fashion, Oklahoma State pulls it away and wins that game against BYU. And now you have an opportunity to cement a guy like Alan Bowman in mm-hmm. Oklahoma State lore, which I, I didn't see coming, especially like when he committed. It's like, oh, geez, how is this going to go? This guy was an assistant coach at Michigan for the last two years, effectively. And, and here he is with, with Ollie Gordon. You mentioned Brendan Presley. What would this team go down as? What would their moniker be in Oklahoma State history if they pull it off Saturday? 
Yeah, just just talk Alan Bowman for a little bit. He's such a good dude. And I know that it you know, he hasn't been the greatest. He's not Mason Rudolph esque. He's not yeah. he, you know, Brandon Whedon. Uh, but if he wins this game on Saturday, it's gonna be him and Brandon Whedon who have, you know, Big Twelve titles. Um, you know, Mason Rudolph wasn't able to do that. So uh it, and it kind of reminds me of Taylor Cornelius was very polarizing um in twenty eighteen of the Oklahoma State fan base. He he stays, you know, the extra year that that he got. Um, he backed up Mason Rudolph his entire tenure. Um, and then he comes in and some people wanted them to start a freshman Spencer Sanders to kind of get that going right away. Um, and, and, you know, other people were like, hey, this guy's waited his turn. And he was a two point conversion away from beating Kyler Murray in Oklahoma in Norman. And I just kind of think of how different people would have thought of Taylor Cornelius had he completed that two point conversion. Um, and, and that's kind of the area that Alan Bowman's in right now. And I think people are you know, happy with Alan Bowman. Uh, I think a lot of people want him to come back uh, another year, which is a possibility somehow. Um, yeah. So, yeah. 28 year old Alan Bowman, Brandon yeah. Whedon ask. Yes. Yeah. So, so if, if, but if he can win this game, this is huge. This is putting, you know, him deep in the lore of Oklahoma state quarterbacks. Um, this is putting him right up there with the, with some of those guys that I mentioned before. And, and that's kind of crazy to think about. He, you know, he obviously starts his career at tech has some really weird injuries then all yeah. of a sudden tech is just supplying quarterbacks around the country to, to people. Um, you think, you know, Donovan Smith and uh, you, you yeah. know, you got Alan Bowman here. So uh, th- this would be huge for Alan Bowman. It would be huge for this team in general. I don't, it, it's so weird because this hasn't really ever happened before that a team that on paper isn't all that great is all of a sudden potentially going down as one of the you know most heralded teams in program history. Yeah. If, if they can find a way to win this game. So I, I don't, honestly don't know what, people will think about this team once they look back, you know, 10 years from now. Uh, but, you know, for us who have lived it, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. Given the lack of expectation preseason and then parlaying that the transfer portal turmoil of the offseason parlayed into now a Big 12 championship, I, I do think that speaks so much to Mike Gundy in this conversation and what it would add to his career, his resume, and his standing in the Big 12. And I wonder if it makes him the best, the best coach in the Big 12. Marshall, let's go there next. But first... We hear from our friends over at LinkedIn. This is Locked On Big 12, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. LinkedIn Talent Solutions is where you go to find the right hire for your job. LinkedIn.com forward slash Locked On College. I hire an intern every semester. I go to the colleges. I say, hey, do you have an intern? And the way that I do it, I send them a LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn link where I can find the right candidates and fast to interview them quickly and get the job hiring process out of the way as fast as possible. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It has a vast network, more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It's super easy to use. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and they want to help you. The process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making this even quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. LinkedIn.com. Keep in mind that terms and conditions do apply. 